Well, morning folks and welcome to Old Classic Car and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous day here at OCCHQ. Now the weather forecast isn't looking too amazing for the next week or so, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to take a little Renault 4CV out for a quick test run. Why a test run, you may ask? Well, I've done a few little jobs to it recently. I fitted a fuel filter into the fuel supply into the carburetor because it was having a bit of a problem with muck getting into the carburetor jets. Also, the spark plug gaps when I managed to get the plugs out eventually because they were very, very tight into the aluminium head which is never a good idea anyway. Um, the plug gaps were tiny, so I've reset all four of those. And I had a look at the ignition points gap as well. And that was also very, very small, probably half of what it should be. So I've reset that. And hopefully that combination of just getting those little adjustments a bit more close to how they should be, um, will just improve its running. It does drive okay. I'm hoping it'll just run just that little bit better thanks to these improvements I've made and with the sun out and the lovely blue skies who needs an excuse anyway to take a Renault 4 CV out for a little test run down the lanes. Yeah, so the gearing was 
quite high geared on the early cars, that was changed during production at some point. This car, the chassis number is 1953 or thereabouts, it was put on the road registered here in the UK, it was a UK assembled car. pulled over because a i need to just check everything make sure there are no leaks like i say i put some fuel clips on the fuel pipes because there were no clips on there at all and that didn't strike me as being a very good idea at all and uh, so we'll just check for leaks check for leaks around the uh, fuel filter that i added the other day and uh, i think we will just sit down and admire the view there's a very convenient little bench here so occasionally if i'm passing this way i'll pull over here and just admire the view Got the Shropshire Hills over in the distance over there, Long Mind, and so on. And uh, the view is only improved today by the presence in the foreground of this beautiful little Renault 4 CV. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Do you like French cars? Do you prefer your 2 CVs or your Renault 5s perhaps to these early 4 CVs? This was very much a wartime design of course. These were designed under the nose of the occupying German forces who were running the Renault factory at the time. The engineers and the QT and the little back room started working about 1944 or thereabouts to design their post-war people's car. Obviously VW were already thinking along the same lines when what became the Beetle and Citroen brought out the 2CV of course. And Renault, this was their response to those two cars, the little 4CV. And what a bonny little car it is too. I think it's just fantastic. I should have shut the door properly before starting filming, sorry about that. Another little addition, 
was this badge. Now, this is for the Automobile Club de l'Ouest. That's the organising club that organises the racing, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And in about 1984 or 1985, I actually visited there with my uncle and gran. We went camping there on a couple of occasions, actually, but in 84 and 85. And then one year, I can't remember which, we actually popped into the Le Mans Museum. And I bought this from the museum shop. And I've never had it on a car. I've never had a car, really, that was suitable for putting it on. I didn't just want to put it on the modern. Um, but when this little French fancy arrived, I thought, perfect. So the other evening, I made up a little bracket to hang it off the existing screw holes and then the front number plate. And there it has pride of place for the very first time since 1985 or thereabouts. It's actually on a car at last. Um, it's been a long time coming, but here we are. And there it is. I also replaced these screws as well. I had horrible bolts holding the number plates on. I didn't like that at all. So I've got some nice proper slotted screws just to look a bit more in keeping because we like details like that. Over in the distance, you can just see some of the former buildings have been reclad. But in the distance, just over there, you can see the old buildings from RAF Tilstock. That was a wartime bomber base during the Second World War. Fantastic scenery, lovely little car to bomb around in. The test run so far seems to be going quite well. But yeah, what a glorious view. Well, there's no sign of any leaks. I, mean, I hate these things. Trust me, that's not going to be a permanent solution. They look pretty ghastly. Um, but for the purposes of testing I just bought a bag of these and I can change them fairly regularly as and when I need to. Um, obviously there's a fuel pump down there. Yeah none of these had clips on, there were no clips anywhere on the fuel line in which didn't strike me as being a particularly clever idea. And like I say I had the plugs out as well, put a spot of copper grease on the threads of the plugs before putting them back in because otherwise you can end up with a metal reaction between the, uh, the spark plugs and the aluminium cylinder head and if you leave it for too long you will really struggle to get these things out plus they had been tightened up so much they were crazy tight so uh, i've just nipped them in gently um, because they don't need to be super super tight but yeah no leaks that's the that's the main thing that's all quite encouraging like i say i'll leave this in for a little while and swap it for another one I don't think the camera can pick it up, but there is just a little bit of grime in the bottom of there, so we will keep an eye on that. But yeah, touch wood, things are improving. I also put a clip on there as well. That's the uh, that's the air filter over there. That's a pipe into it, into the carburetor, of course, but there was no clip on there either, and this just kept falling off. So uh, that's a bit better. Well, my stomach is telling me that it can't be too far away from lunch. So I think we will carry on this test run and then head into, possibly head into Whitchurch and see if we can just grab something to eat in there because uh, I'm in the mood for a pork pie and I know a place that sells really, really nice pork pies. So uh, it may well be that I end up in that direction. But anyway, let's go and uh, let's just carry on this little drive around in the Renault and see how we get on from there. And if that all goes to plan, then we'll go and find something to nibble on. And the wind is just catching that engine cover, so I don't want it to bang shut. You have to watch this a little bit, because it only sits in that little recess there on the cylinder head. So the wind can easily catch this, and that falls off, and then you have all sorts of problems. We were driving through town the other day, there was loads of people around, there was a bit of a do on. Um, and I heard several people say, oh look at that beetle. And that's not the first time I've heard someone call this a beetle. So I'm very tempted to get some stickers made up saying it's not a beetle because it's not a beetle it may be a contemporary of the vw beetle but it's not a beetle and they didn't do a four-door beetle so i'm not quite sure what's going on there but 
I suppose at first glance, through beer goggles, I suppose it could look a little bit like a Beetle. The engine is at the same end of the car, although it's water-cooled in the case of the Renault 4 CV, whereas the Beetle, of course, was air-cooled. Anyway, right, let's carry on this very important test run. This takes a lot longer without my youthful assistant with me at my side. Unfortunately he had to be at school today. Well, <clears throat> despite apparently having plenty of essence, essence, we appear to be out of fuel, or at least I think that's the reason why it won't start. Oh no! Phew, well I managed to get it to draw some fuel again, but that was a bit of a panic for a few minutes there because I thought I was in for a long walk, but I don't quite know what happened there. It seems to be running now, but I think we'll put some fuel in just to be on the safe side. Well, let's see how we go now. Just a few litres. Well, we've made it to a car park, so I think we're definitely going to have to grab something to eat after those few moments of excitement. What happened there? I'm not quite sure. Could have even been a bit of fuel vaporising because I was sat for a while with the engine running while I was messing around with cameras and so on. So it could just be something fairly simple like that. And I did have the boot lid, or the bonnet rather, up for a few minutes. And maybe that just helped the, temp you know, the temperatures come down a little bit. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But it certainly, I think it'll pay going forwards to have a tin of fuel in the car. And also, I'm going to put the original fuel line back in that doesn't have the filter in, just in case, for some reason, the fuel pump is struggling with pumping fuel through that filter. It shouldn't do, but you just never quite know. So, uh, the fuel gauge read OK. It showed about three quarters on the gauge, but obviously you don't quite know how accurate the gauge is. Um, and I've just put about, just, I don't know, two or three gallons in now, and it's right up full, up the pipe there in the back under the bonnet there. So... Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but anyway, we'll let it all cool off a little bit and we'll go and find something to eat. Of course, not before locking the doors, because locking the doors is a bit of a plug. You can't, there's no outside door lock on the driver's side, so you have to lock that door and the two on... Yeah, there's both doors this side and the rear one on the passenger side from inside, and the passenger door is the one with the external lock on it, the key lock. So that's just a little bit of extra excitement just to make life a little bit more interesting. You have to remember to do that. But yeah, let's go and get something to nibble on. Now I do know, to know that over here, we're not going in there. But down here, there is a little pie shop. And I was toying with the idea of coming here. I was in two minds while I was out on this little trip today. But given that excitement and the, the prospect of having to push the car like two miles to the nearest petrol station, which I wasn't really looking forward to, even though it's only a tiddler. Um... I just need to calm down a little bit because that was all a bit too exciting for a, a weekday morning, especially when you're on your flying solo and Mrs. OCC isn't at home to come out with a tow rope or the towing bar. So uh, I just need to sort of have a bit of fresh air, relax a little bit. And let's go and find a nice pie because I know where there happened to be just such a thing. In case I didn't mention, we are actually in Whitchurch and there's many, many nice buildings. Although well, uh, this isn't one of them, but in this arcade. I happen to know there's a little emporium called Powell's Pies and they actually make the pies in the shop, in the window of the shop. So let's go and have a look, see if it's here, see if it's open today. I hope it is. Oh, it's looking promising. Here we go, Powell's Pies. I've had one or two pies here in the past so I know what I'm getting.
Here are the pies being made at Powell's Pies. What a fantastic place this is. I'm so glad it was open today when I called by. I've had many pies here, so uh, just a quick shout out to proper handmade pies. There we go. <laughs> right, so that's, that's one pie bought. Let's get back to the Renault and see how we go on with that one because uh, we don't want any more repeats of a breakdown on the way back home. So that was all a bit, bit frustrating, but like I say, I think it may just be the temperature because it's quite a hot day today. It's probably one of the warmest days we've actually driven the car on, so... Uh, I'll have to give it a little bit of a benefit of the doubt and being rear-engined, probably cooling is a little bit marginal at the best of times, but yeah, right, let's go and see where we parked it. Well, it's still here. Okie dokie, let's see how we get on this time. It's a bit more like it. Actually, I think maybe we're just looking at a bit of fuel vaporising. So the downside of it being a warm day, that it's warm. Sneak out of here and go cause a few queues in the roads of Shropshire. Well, there we go, there's the Renault safely back at home. So that's good news. So what conclusions can I draw from this little test run? Um, well, I don't think the uh, jets blocking up is a problem anymore, thanks to the uh, fuel filter. Um, but obviously we did have a slight failure to proceed um, on the back lanes when it decided it didn't want to carry on running for a little while. Um, so there's clearly something to look into there. I'm not quite sure what happened there, um, but not to worry. I soon sorted that out, but it does pay, I think, to carry a spare tin of fuel with me. Thanks very much for watching and more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now. Mmm.